Hello everyone, it's my pleasure to present our paper where we introduce a new lightweight cryptography scheme which we call Series Probe. Series Probe stands for ciphertext and signature propagation and it's mainly designed for resource constrained environments that involve each computing devices and IoTs. In this paper, I had the pleasure to work with four of the best minds in the field Arwa, Abdurrahman, Silas, and Nail. According to many technical reports, such as Thales, SonicWall, Kaspersky, and Nokia, IoT has become a prime target of hackers. From looking at these attacks and the security implications of current IoT designs in general, in this paper we consider a common scenario that has attracted researchers over the years. In such a scenario, IoTs, or generally edge computing devices, are being connected to the Internet and participate in Internet scale protocols such as the DNS, TLS, HTTPS, and many others. Traditionally, security solutions for these protocols rely on conventional cryptographic algorithms that require computationally expensive operations that can be far too complex for such low power and inexpensive devices. In such a scenario, one of three options will occur. Performance will suffer, security will suffer, and or developers will suffer. If we go with the first option, this means that we choose to return security and extend it to the edge uh, or IoT devices. In this case, for sure, performance and energy will suffer. If, however, we go with the second option, this means that we choose to sacrifice security entirely from all interactions, therefore the last link is left insecure. If we choose the third option, this would require to rewrite the entire system or even develop new security protocols specifically to incorporate these lightweight devices. Apparently, this option is, not, is undesirable since it places large burdens on developers and operators. In fact, considering this option may not even be possible because of backwards compatibility issues since the internet side servers may not be willing to change. Several studies have been conducted presenting the computational and energy cost of conventional cryptography protocols on embedded IoT processors. At our end, we conducted our own measurements to measure the cryptographic overhead that occurred on the TLS handshake. So basically, we conducted the measurements on three generations of Raspberry Pis whose hardware specifications are shown here in this table. As we can see here, elliptic curve consumes more time to finish a TLS handshake comparing to CSPROP. CSPROP is actually faster by a factor of about 2.7 times than when using elliptic curve. IoT companies and developers are eager to find solutions to secure these resource-constrained IoT environments. For that, a new cryptographic concept has been introduced, which is called lightweight cryptography. This concept aims to design low overhead cryptographic operations that do not require heavy computations. However, there are some problems with existing solutions and proposals, and based on our analysis, we found that they either still require expensive cryptographic operations, proven to be vulnerable to different attack surfaces, and or require an intermediate party between the data origin and the IoT device, similar to the setup of the empirical study, for example, a proxy or a gateway, that has to be stateful and trusted. And in this case, such proposals do not provide into insecurity. Motivated by the aforementioned concerns, we introduce CSPROP. The core of our contribution is a propagation algorithm in which a capable machine sitting upstream of a lightweight device can modify an authenticated message or a cipher text so it can be efficiently verified or decrypted by a lesser machine. Unlike previous work, our construction of CSPROP doesn't require the capable machine to be stateful or trusted. So basically any powerful machine should do the work. In CSPROC, we care about two public key operations, which are signature validation and encryption. 
Our results show that CSPROP outperforms conventional cryptographic solutions. Thus, this would avoid pitfall one, which is in regards to performance. We also show in our proof of security in paper that the only way to produce a propagated signature or a ciphertext is by modifying the original. As a result, pitfall one is avoided, which is in regards to security. In regards to development, we also show that CSPROP is compatible with a large fraction of internet traffic, thus avoiding pitfall three. So here we provide a high level overview of CSPROP. In this example, Alice is the end device that is resource constrained. Patty is our capable machine propagator that doesn't need to be trusted or, uh, or stateful. And we have also Bob, which is the data origin server that can be the DNS or the web server, for example. All transactions between Alice and Bob should go through Patty. So Patty can be the DNS resolver, for example, or the default gateway for IOTs. The main idea here is that the propagated signature and ciphertext are much less expensive to generate, impossible to forge, and do not require trust in party or any modifications to the protocol at the server side. For signature propagation, the origin server generates the original digital signature using its private key, then sends the original signature and its public key to Patty. In real-world implementations, Patty completely verify the signature received by Bob, then forwards the data as plain text to Alice. Apparently, this setting doesn't provide end-to-end -end security, since it leaves this last link between Patty and Alice unprotected, and that's one of the main reasons I was able to successfully launch a client-side DNS cache poisoning attack. However, with CSPROP, when Patty receives this original signature from Bob, she computes the propagated one, then sends it to Alice. Then Alice, using its uh, or using uh, our CSPROP algorithm, can completely validate the signature that was originally generated by Bob. For ciphertext propagation, our construction is similar, but it is on the opposite uh, direction. But before we see that, let me show you how this procedure happens in real-world configurations. If Alice wants to send an encrypted data to Bob, and since it's resource constrained, she doesn't have an option but to trust Patty to perform this operation on her behalf. For that, Alice sends the data as plain text to Patty, then Patty completely encrypts the data before she, she sends it to Bob. As you can see here in this uh, setting, trusting party is like a must thing that doesn't need or doesn't accept any negotiations. However, if party gets compromised, then party would be able to temper with the plain text, then sends it uh, to Bob, pretending that this data has been sent originally from Alice. This is, of course, a, ser a serious problem related to data confidentiality authenticity and integrity. We solved this issue with CSPROP, with low overhead. In our construction, Alice partially encrypts the plain text, then sends the propagated ciphertext to Patty. Then Patty completes the encryption process and sends the complete ciphertext to Bob. Then Bob, using its private key, can then efficiently decrypt and obtain the plain text from Alice. As we will see later in the following slide, CSPROP guarantees that in addition to security, CSPROP outperforms conventional cryptography. CSPROP is a new cryptography scheme that relies on using a small factor instead of using a small public key in traditional crypto schemes such as RSA with low public exponent. CSPROP is beneficial for resource-constrained devices and IOTs since it provides partial and efficient public key operations that require reasonable cryptographic overhead. As we have shown in the previous slide, CSPROP optimizes public key operations and we show in an empirical study on an IOT camera that such operations are very common. 
In regards to security, our proof of security that is presented in paper guarantees that the interested party, the propagator, can never modify signatures and ciphertext. In our implementation, as we will discuss briefly in the following slides, we show that CSPROB is backwards compatible with traditional servers on the internet. Now let's see how we can use CSPROB in real-world cryptographic implementations. Among all the other available crypto systems that we use in our daily lives, in our paper, we instantiate our propagation scheme based on the RSA crypto system for both signature and ciphertext. We illustrate the use and advantages of CSPROP on two important internet protocols, which are DNSSEC and TLS. We use DNSSEC to highlight signature propagation and TLS to highlight ciphertext propagation. In our evaluation, we compare CSPROP with traditional implementations of DNSSEC validation. We show the results based on two metrics, latency and energy consumption, since these are the most important factors when choosing or developing the best crypto systems. As we can see here from the figures, device specifications affect performance. For instance, for latency, we find that CSPROP is faster than traditional DNS validation on all the tested devices. In regards to energy consumption, in all scenarios, we see that our CSPROP uh, CS provides efficient energy reductions on all devices. Here are the results of CSPROP over TLS. As we can see, CSPROP efficiently outperforms traditional implementations of the TLS handshake for both latency and energy consumption. So now that we have seen how CSPROP outperforms conventional crypto schemes in real-world implementations, and specifically on TLS and DNSSEC, let's see how CSPROP would do as a primitive on even more resource-constrained devices. So on the same CSPROP uh, paper, we present a comprehensive measurement study on the performance of CSPROP as a primitive on a specific type of IoT devices, which is microcontroller. For hardware, we select Arduino MKR Wi-Fi 1010 as the test platform since it meets the throughput and energy consumption requirements of current cryptography primitive, uh, primitives and schemes, including RSA. As we can see, CSPROP as a primitive outperforms the traditional RSA public key operations in all scenarios. So in conclusion, we can say that for the same security level, CSPROP always outperforms traditional RSA public key operations. I hope that the lessons learned from this paper would help us to build or at least critically understand the best framework for IoT and its computing devices. More precisely, we need to understand the required security primitives that overcome all the three aforementioned challenges. Since in this CSPRO paper, we try to solve the issues related to public key operations, for future work, our aim is to find methods to optimize private key operations. Here we provide the references used in this presentation. Thank you for listening.